I have people message me on Instagram saying you're really slim, I like your hair. The only problem is I'd break you. And I'm walking on the beach, everyone's just turning, looking at me like, ah, oh, I'm not even big. I starve myself, wow. which I have to do to yeah. get my body to eat itself. Well, all right, fat boy. Oh, hold off, he wants a sausage. <laughs> As I've got older, I've come to accept that the one thing that I can't change in my body is my penis. Where we stand at the moment in 2018 for guys, there's a massive, massive pressure for, for, for us all to physically look like maybe a Greek god. In order to be masculine or attractive, that you should be well built. You can't show any weakness, you, know, you can't show any feelings, you can't show any softness. You have an expectation to be strong. Flat stomachs, abs, muscles. Looking great, looking groomed. The ideal body type is definitely six pack, puffed out chest. Oh yeah, shredded. He's ripped. It was always pushed into my brain about you have to look a certain way. It does play with your head quite a lot. I think, nah, I could be bigger. Me wanting to look a certain way, that stems from childhood, really. My dad always said to me, you have to look physically strong, and he drilled that into me from a very young age. I'm kind of OK with my physique, but it's that thing of striving for perfection, even though I know I'll never have perfection. I was a 30 waist, then it was a 32, then a 34. Then people started making comments about, oh, is he pregnant? It was always a bit of fun, but somewhere in the back of there, it brings a bit of truth, it hurts. I wanted to do something about it. Just puts that fear into you of making a change and failing. People assume that when you've got an eating disorder, you look skeletal, that you look incredibly thin. But I was never like that. I could look just like a perfectly healthy weight and people wouldn't know that I had bulimia. When I was young, I was bullied for my appearance. I was very, very small and skinny. And that never ended. Five years at school. I've actually weighed eight stone now since I was 11. That's not changed. I've kind of just got taller and stretched out. Growing up as a black man, I feel that there is, yeah, sort of stereotype that like the way we're seen as well. I could come at the gym one day, I'm in my tracksuit, you know, I'm sweating out. People just think, oh, yeah, like, it's a big black guy walking behind me or something and then across the road and, I don't know, it's just quite weird. There's a couple of times where I've been stopped in my car as well, told to come out of the car, and then straight away it's like, oh, yeah, you're, you're, you've got a bit of size in you, mate, innit? I need to put these handcuffs on you. I am someone who has always struggled with body image. I was around 15 years old. Um, my parents were diagnosed with cancer. I shut myself off from the world because I didn't want everyone to see how much my family was in pain. And I was already dealing with everything else that a 15 year old deals with. Identity, sexuality, I was overweight. I did get teased. People used to say that when I walked, it caused earthquakes. And all these layers just built up on top of me. I remember one moment after school, I just ate so much food that I was naturally sick. Afterwards, I had this feeling of, I'm empty, and that feeling became an addiction. Kids would tell me in school I was anorexic, that my parents starved me. One day, there was four lads on both sides of the corridor. I was on my own, I had just got out of a lesson. Two picked me up by the arms, took me up the stairs, put me over the banister, sellotaped me there, and left me. I was so lightweight, I stayed there, and they took two teachers to get me down, but I was there for about half an hour. And it was in a crowded corridor, so obviously you had everyone walking past, laughing as they went along, and it just felt like torture. I ended up going home and crying to my mother the whole night. I like, turned around to my mum at one point and said, did you do anything while you were pregnant with me? Why am I this way? At the age of 17, I went to the doctors to get help for my bulimia. I was turned away because I was a boy, and I was told that I didn't have an eating disorder, it was stress. People assume that teenage boys are just confident and that they don't have issues with their image or their body image. From that, I was just stuck in this spiral that I just couldn't get out of. 
And during that time, when I went to the bathroom to be sick, I felt like, this is it. This is how you will end your life. This eating disorder will kill you. And I was OK with that. I tried these extreme diets. I was taking fattening gaining pills that were costing me hundreds of pounds a month. I was eating KFC, McDonald's, breakfast, lunch and dinner. I only gave up after about eight months of doing that. I was getting nowhere. My dad he used to lift weights as well. He wasn't serious about it like I am. I used to go in the shed, take his weights. I'm probably about 14. I just started lifting in my room and then started getting big. My training stopped quite dramatically. I was 25. I came up from back. My leg was actually just broken in three places, like mangled. I was in a wheelchair for quite some time. I went back skinny. I had to learn to walk again. I had this determination, like the doctors did say to me, like, oh, you're not going to be able to walk for 12 months. I done it in about five. But I was determined. Like, oh, I need to get back in the gym. Like, look at me. Like, my clothes are all hanging off me now. And so that was part of the drive. When I was younger, I was quite sporty, so I played football five times a week. I was nine and a half stone when I was 19, 20. 24, 25 mark is when I just stopped playing football altogether and, and never, never done any exercise after that. I started eating takeaways. I stopped looking after myself, and the weight just started piling on. At my heaviest, I was up to 20 stone. I had no confidence. There's a lot of pressure on men to look a certain way, and that means that we like to put on the front that we're happy, we're big, we're proud. And then it's the, the fat boy name start coming in. You can say, oh, it's just a joke or banter. I used to wear a bra, I wore a thong, you know, I'd, I'd run around naked or I'd draw stuff on my belly, I'd shave all my hair off. Just, I wore a gimp suit. You know, if I was taking the mick out myself, they couldn't do it to me and make me feel crap. I watched both my brothers be taken to the gym and train and get big by my dad. If I ever came down without a T-shirt on, your arms get a bit skinnier, there would be comments. So as soon as I hit 16, he took me to the gym, introduced me to <laughs> training. To look a certain way, you have to sacrifice certain things, and, and part of that is pleasure. You have to eat a certain amount of food at a certain time of day. When I eat, I'm, I'm so look forward to eating. Halfway through the meal, I start getting depressed because the meal's going to be over soon, and I'm still hungry. I think I'm more addicted to me pushing me. That comes from the other insecurities in my life. I have a disability. My right foot is three shoe sizes smaller than my left, and I have four toes on my right foot, and my right leg is five centimetres shorter than my left. It stopped me joining the police force, it stopped me joining the fire brigade and all those kind of things which test oneself and that not everybody can do. It ain't easy. Every day, I go like that. What am I doing? Can't I just, like... Just be normal. We all have issues with body image, and that's why I think it's so important to have these conversations. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I see someone who's incredibly confident and got great muscles, but is there any other time when you think, hey, do you know what? I'll give myself a break this year. I, I, I have that thought literally every every day. Yeah. That I, that I go, is, is this actually worth it? And I keep going, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 it is. Four or five years of my life, I had bulimia. OK. Um, from a teen up until I was 21. Oh, wow. And it was for five years. Every day was a routine then. Right. Um, so now I avoid anything that involves controls over a, any sort of shift in diet. I, I, I kind of see that there's similarities between maybe having an eating disorder and mm -hmm. doing what I do, that I starve myself, wow, which okay. I have to do to yeah. get my body to eat itself yeah. before I stand on stage. And even though it's unpleasant, I force myself to do it. You're talking sure. about stuff that people don't want to talk about. Just starting the conversation can be so difficult mm -hmm. for everyone, because not everyone wants to talk, not everyone is ready. So we've seen the conversations before, we've seen it with um, women and 
the, over the last 10 years or so. And now it's just a natural process that we can start adopting those conversations too. You know, women have always had to look a certain way and act a certain way. Society has now said that men need to look a certain way just like women. Now men are able to talk more about body image. One thing I've learned is that everybody thinks they're alone. Everybody thinks what they go through is, is some unique. Yeah. And it's just for them and no one else has experienced it and it's not, it's not true. I mean, it's always down to the same thing, isn't it? Just having an open and honest conversation. Exactly, yeah. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Guys have become so obsessed with what they look like now. I never thought there'd be a day where people bothered about getting hair transplants and how oh, veneers and all that sort of stuff. I think that the pressure on men, particularly now, has increased a lot. We're always presented with images, whether it's online, on TV. We start comparing ourselves to what's out there, and that comparison is very dangerous. It's always been around. It's just the problem with social media is that it becomes so much bigger. People, they're taking out their phones, they're scrolling constantly. Their brain is absorbing all this information, and they're not actually realising it. They're just doing it, and then think, oh, OK, like, I wonder if I can look like that. I know what it takes to get that kind of body. That's not who the average person is. You only have to go into shops to see what's left on the shelves. It's the smalls and the mediums. Every size that I want, large or extra large, is gone. Am I part of the problem? Um, to be honest, it does my head in. I recently, not so long, took a break from my Instagram. I deactivated my account. Just, I got fed up of it. Now, I don't feel like I need to change my body shape. It has a massive benefit. In the bedroom, I do like to be thrown about a bit. <laughs> Gay dating apps, there's so many categories you can fall into. Like, I fall into something called a twink, which is someone that's slim and looks young. I do use the hashtag twinks to my advantage. I put it in there just to up my followers and my likes. You get people messaging you on a daily basis saying you're exactly my type. Knowing that people are attracted to slim guys like me, it's like I can accept my body. I try to make fun of myself and my body before anybody else could. And then I met this girl. She was like, well, no, that's, that's not right. You, know, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be saying that. You know, you've got feelings. You know, she introduced me to new foods, you know, encouraged me to eat more healthy. I think my attitude changed, and then my body changed after it. Now I go to the gym, I've got a little bit of muscle, but I'm by no means fit or unfit, I'm just average. I have gone from a bigger guy that hates himself to a big guy that loves himself. Do I do this to impress people? I would say no. I actually train because I just love it. It's part of my lifestyle. A lot of people train to have an ego or you know, to make themselves scary. And that's one thing I don't agree on. My goal originally wasn't, it wasn't to win. It wasn't to make a career out of it. And then literally I put my big toe on that stage and it felt like I was home. <laughs> I was only supposed to do it once. I'm now doing it again and I will do it again. So I've definitely got the bug for it. I feel like I have to be confident in myself. I can't expect other people to be confident in me if I'm not even confident with the way I look. People think you can say whatever you want to a man about their body and that they'll just take it. If you can support somebody that's overweight, if you can be nice to somebody that's overweight, rather than the, the, the nasty comments and the bullying, then, you know, half the battle's already won. It doesn't matter what I'm presenting here externally. It matters about what I feel inside, and that's what shows.